I'm Sherry Uffin, and you are watching Spotlight on the Arts. Today's show is all about the hard work that goes on behind the scenes of a production. But let me introduce our panel for today. The lovely Marjorie Lowe is an award-winning actress gracing the stage of many theaters throughout the country. But her home is right here in South Florida. Bill Hirschman is an arts journalist and a founder of FloridaTheaterOnStage.com. And Teddy Harrell, who is the Assistant Center Director at the African Heritage Cultural Arts Center <laughs> and Producing Artistic Director at the African American Performing Arts Community Theater. And all of that is on his door. <laughs> Our guest today is Jill Kraditch, who is the Programming Director for the Broward Center of the Performing Arts. Welcome, Jill, to Spotlight on the Arts. Thank you so much. Jill, as a programming director of the Broward Center, what are your responsibilities? Tell us a little bit about them. Sure. Thanks. Um, so I'm responsible for um, identifying product that the Broward Center is going to be at risk for presenting in our various venues. Mm -hmm. um, and I work with a team, and we divide up all of the different responsibilities of programming, the different genres that we present. Uh, to book about 400 performances a year for the Broward Center. Oh, and that's your responsibilities are for 400 performances. Well, myself and my team. Oh my goodness! Congratulations yes, on there that. There are three of us Ooh. that book uh, the Broward Center product. That's wonderful. So uh, you have a background in theater, do you not? I do. How I do. did you? And uh, what was your journey to becoming programming director at Broward? So um, I actually have a, a BA in mm -hmm. theater. So I took some acting, some technical, um, wide variety of theater classes mm -hmm. at the University of Florida many moons ago, and started in tech. Uh, my first jobs, I, I did a little bit of acting right after college, but really found that I liked the technical side of things. So I actually worked as a stagehand um, with the IA uh, for several years until I was offered a job in the production department at the Broward Center for the Performing Arts and started in that department, um, learned quite a bit about advancing shows um, and that side of things, mm -hmm. and then moved over into the programming department. I, I really couldn't even tell you a what year it was. Ago. A few years later, <laughs> moved over into programming, um, but my background in production really helps me with the programming side of things. I bet, because you know both sides of the stage. I know both so sides you're... of it. I can read through a technical rider and understand what they're asking for, mm -hmm. whether it's going to fit on our stage, which stage it might be more appropriate for. So it's been a very interesting journey, but almost always at the Broward Center. Wow. It's been my home for many, many Jill, years. Jill, you said which stage? How many stages are, are, are there? In... So we focus on four stages primarily. Mm -hmm. We focus on the uh, Abdo New River Room is the smallest at mm -hmm. 160 seats. Okay. The Amaturo Theater yeah. is 584 seats. Mm -hmm. The Parker Playhouse, which is off-site, mm -hmm. um, is 1,168 seats. Goodness. And then the Broadway House, the Aurene Theater, is uh, 2,558 seats. Oh, so, and then we also do book in our ancillary venues. Mm -hmm. So we also book shows over at the Aventura Cultural Center, which is 325 seats, mm -hmm. uh, occasionally over at the Miniachi Theater, which is 490 seats. And if we have an opportunity for a show, we will sometimes rent a theater. For example, we're doing Neil deGrasse Tyson up at um, FAU because mm -hmm. we did not have our theater available for the dates that he was going to be in town. So the question everybody will always ask yeah. you is, how do you decide what is the process in deciding who to book, what to book, when to book them? Uh, uh, you know, we know that this is going to work for our audiences locally, which are different than in uh, Miami-Dade sure. or, uh, or, or the Kravis. How do you make those decisions? I know that you make some of them years in advance because of trying to get people who are booked that far out. So Absolutely. How do, you, so how do you decide? So we'll start with the when, because that's almost the easiest. Routing is dictated by the tour. Mm -hmm. So we can want a performer to come to South Florida, but really it's dictated by when they're willing to go out on tour. And I'm talking about concerts and mm -hmm. stand-up comedy. 
um, and even national tours, mm -hmm. um, when they're available to tour and when they're available to come to South Florida. Mm -hmm. You know, as you know, we're at the bottom of a long peninsula. We're not uh, on the way to or from anywhere like Atlanta is or even mm -hmm. the Carolinas. So we get a call from an agent. This person is ready to go out. This is the window. And you start with availability. Um, and a lot of times they're looking for avails for a two to three month window. And they'll say, send all your avails. And of course, they're doing that throughout the state of Florida. And then they sort of are lining up the window where that artist can hit five or six performing arts centers uh, throughout the state to make it worth it for them to drive all the way down and get to South Florida. Mm -hmm. And then you decide which theater is appropriate for which, that particular show. Exactly. You must be busy every single minute of your <laughs> life. I am very, very busy. Uh, yes. Life. yes, but I love it. I love it because every single day is different. There is rarely a day that I don't get a phone call from an agent asking me about an artist, and I am not Googling, who is that artist? Mm -hmm. you know, especially with YouTube and podcasts and Facebook blogs, there are so many different avenues for artists to be discovered now mm -hmm. that it, it's hard to keep track of mm -hmm. everybody that's out there and touring. So my job is, it's never boring. Have you found with YouTube mm -hmm. that it's had an effect on um, people buying tickets. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Because, so how do you deal with that? Well, you you try to do your research um, to the best of your ability. Um, so with YouTube, you would see how many subscribers they have, okay. how many people are watching, how many views of each mm. of their videos. Mm -hmm. But there have absolutely been acts that um, I've been called about, and I was like, who? Who is this? Uh, Dan and <laughs> Phil is a perfect example. Uh -huh. And I don't know if you know who Dan and Phil are, but they're these two uh, British YouTubers. And when I got the call, I'm like, no idea. Mm -hmm. And the agent said, listen, Jill, they are selling out major venues in um, the UK. And they're going to be huge in the United States also. Mm -hmm. And so we started to do our research. I'm like, who's their audience? I said, teenage girls. Oh, perfect. I called my daughter. <laughs> uh -huh. mm -hmm. We started asking parents of teenage girls, and we rolled the dice, and they sold out the Aureen Theater. Mm. Wow. These two guys that, you know, no and one was really knew who they out. were. Sold out. Wow. And it was 13-year-old girls oh. screaming. <laughs> right. Screaming. Girl. It was like the Beatles landed. It was really. How long are the runs in, in uh, particular venues? Are they just one night? It or? depends. It, it very much depends. So our, our Broadway, of course, we're a two-week subscription market. Of course, our slow burn shows run three weeks in our smaller hall. Explain mm -hmm. who they are. What is uh, the slow burn? Explain sure. it to us. So slow burn is our um, regional theater company that performs, it produces and performs in our 584 seat theater. Here in Florida. Here in Florida, and they moved over to the Broward Center. This will be their fourth season. Mm -hmm. So we just are in the first show of our fourth season with them. And how did you make the connection? What was the relationship? So I got to know their work, um, actually through the Carbonell. I was sent to see some of their work okay. um, when they were out at West Boca High School. and. Right away, I saw something special in um, Patrick Fitzwater's direction. I could see that they were operating on a shoestring budget, mm -hmm. um, but the passion, mm -hmm. the way that he was able to get performances out of the actors, and the way that he was able to tell the stories, where it might be a show that I had seen three or four times and not been emotionally moved, I saw Patrick's production of it and was all of a sudden very emotionally invested. So you knew this was something special, this was different. Uh, yes, absolutely. So, you know, it took them some time to uh, develop their following, but at the right time, um, I met with Matthew and Patrick, and we decided to bring them over to the Amaturo. Lucky yeah. all around. Yeah. Yes. I yes. heard you brought in some photos for us to see. Oh, I think I, I did. I think this would be a good time for us to okay. mm -hmm. look <laughs> at right. them. So these, these are our teen ambassadors. Um, this is a program that uh, we created uh, nine years ago. We're in our ninth season. And these are high school students 
that um, apply. We get mm -hmm. about 70 applications every year and we're able to pick 25 of them. And what they do is they come see the shows. We're given tickets by Broadway Across America, Miami City Ballet, Florida Grand Opera, Slow Burn, um, a lot of our classical shows, dance shows, and they come and they see them and they review them. And oh. their job is to speak to their peer group. Their job is to talk about our shows to other teenagers so mm -hmm. that young people know what's happening in our venue. Watch out, Bill, you might be out of a job. Yes. The more the merrier. <laughs> Absolutely. The more the merrier, please. Absolutely. So these Aww. are our wonderful Slow Burn partners, mm -hmm. uh, Patrick Fitzwater and Matthew Karinko, who I just love working with. They're so passionate about what they do, mm -hmm. and we've been able to increase the number of shows that they do where we're employing hundreds of South Florida actors, designers, technicians every season. Union and, members now too. And now union members. And, and you co-produce to some degree. We do, we, we do, we co-produce with Which them. is unusual for a presenting house. It is, it is. We decided to dive in and co-produce with them and it's gone very, very well. So yes, we're very excited about that. Jill, how does diversity ever uh, become a factor for you too as well with your audiences? So, as you know, Broward County is a hugely diverse county, and our job is to serve all of the county. So we are constantly trying to reach out to our community connections, um, especially if we have an act that might be um, from another country where I might not be familiar with their level of popularity in our market. We'll reach out to maybe the consulate maybe uh, someone who's just very active within that community and ask them, hey, do you think this is a good booking for Broward County? Mm -hmm. um, do you think the people of Broward County and, and I really try county because we pull from all three counties would want to come out and, and see this artist. But we do try to be um, very diverse because we try to serve our entire sure. population. And you know, you talked earlier about technical writers and reading technical writers. Mm -hmm. Has there ever been a technical writer from an artist that you've gotten for concerts or anything that's just been so difficult to fulfill? Well, yes. And a lot of times that's because an artist might have just yes. done an arena tour two years before that. And, you know, maybe now they're coming down in numbers sure. and they're going to come to a performing arts center. Okay. So sometimes they'll send us a rider that's just silly. It's, it's not a performing arts center rider. It's an arena rider. Jill, did you bring in some more pictures for us? Oh, I, I think so. <laughs> okay, that's a good time to look oh, at them. Oh, so this was just such a wonderful day. Um, Ron Chernow wrote the novel, Hamilton, that yeah. the musical was based on. Mm -hmm. And he came to tour our venue um, last year, or earlier this year. And I was very, very blessed to get to show him around. Mm -hmm. And he's just a lovely man. Mm -hmm. And so I really love this picture, because mm -hmm. I, I so Aww. enjoyed meeting oh, him. Oh, we know that. Yeah. So uh, Josh Groban, I booked for our, one of our galas a couple of years ago. And I've always been a fan of mm -hmm. Josh Groban, so I was very, very, as you can tell by the smile on my face, <laughs> <laughs> thrilled to get to meet him. And uh -huh. he, was, he was so lovely, but he also did such a wonderful gala performance and talked about the importance of our benefit and all of the educational programs that we do that are paid for by events like this. Mm -hmm. um, so... Um, uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> Again, just dream bookings. When I work with Seth Rudetsky, Seth brings three different major artists. Seth is the funniest person. Isn't he great? Alive. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> he is just great. If you can understand him the way he talks, fast, yes. fast, 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 fast. Absolutely. <laughs> so we always, uh, I always enjoy these shows with Seth. It's such a, it's such a fun series to do, and you know, some of them are very, very funny. Some of them are just amazing singers, mm -hmm. but it's it's always a good time. He comes in with a singer or a Broadway person and interviews them, right? Yeah, well, he interviews and then they sing a song. Okay. And then they interview, they sort of go back and forth okay. and he likes to put them on the spot. Yeah. And he'll say, you know, what was your first Broadway audition song? And he'll say, oh, we're gonna sing that. <laughs> yeah. So it's really fun. Oh, look, um, we know him too. This was another one of my dream bookings. So I really just, treasure this photograph. Um, what did he do? For he you? came in and did um, a one-man show 
and oh, my he had just come off of Cabaret. I'd just mm -hmm. seen him in Cabaret and actually got lucky enough to dance with him on Cabaret. Yes. Uh, in Cabaret, oh, he my takes, goodness. brings two people up from the audience oh. on, in the Broadway production. Wow. And he, he walked over to our table and held his hand out to an elderly lady that was sitting, um, and she had a cane, and she couldn't get up. And so she's like, I can't get up. So he said, well, and he held his hand out to me, and I was just <laughs> fangirling <Wow>. like <laughs> crazy. <laughs> So, um, and this, of course, is Neil deGrasse Tyson, mm -hmm. um, which, again, was just my great honor to <laughs> have us present at the Broward Center, and we'll be bringing him back next January. Unfortunately, we did not have the date at the Broward Center due to Hamilton, mm -hmm. um, but he agreed to come and play um, the K Auditorium on the FAU campus. So we'll oh. be, the Broward Center will be presenting him on that campus, oh, which I think fun. will be great. Oh. Um, this was, again, just another dream booking and my great honor to get to meet um, Secretary Clinton mm -hmm. and get to tell her thank you for all of the work <laughs> that, yeah. that she had done. And uh, her, her speech that night was really inspiring and moving and just encouraged all of us to get out and participate Wonderful. and run for office and participate in voting. So something I've always wondered is how much um, input uh, you have with Broadway across America as to what they bring because I know they have other shows sure. that if you go into another city uh, There's a core, but there's also usually two or yeah. three that they go. We think this will play here mm -hmm. and this will play there I you know my bugaboo was that they never brought next to normal down mm -hmm. and they never brought fun home down both of which sure. did bang up business when regional theaters do. So do you get do you get any say in that? Yes. How does that work? Sure, sure. So of course we're all invested in having a really great and popular sure. season. So we get on the phone um, a number of times throughout the booking process. And some of it just has to do with routing. It has to do with, uh -huh. again, we're at the bottom of the peninsula. So uh -huh. we might want next to normal. It might be on the top of our list. But if they can't find three or four other venues mm -hmm. to book it right. uh, coming down, it just can't get down here. So, so it becomes like a math problem. It is very mm -hmm. much a math. A lot of what I do is yeah. a math problem. <laughs> you can't always get what you want. You right? really can't. But then you got Hamilton, which is a huge coup. How did, did you have to compete for that a long time ago? Or so we started there? talking about it a long time ago, of course. Mm -hmm. And, um, of course, they want a South Florida play, mm -hmm. and, you know, there are three uh, venues in our market. Mm -hmm. We have the blessing of being smack in the middle of the three counties. Mm -hmm. So that really helps oh. us um, with securing those blockbuster hits in year one. Jill, you're, you're a Tony voter. I am. So when you go and see the shows, mm -hmm. uh, do you make a note right then and there and say this is this is what I want that's what I want so or what I'd like to for, have for in some of, of the shows certainly so we we very rarely put a play uh, on our Broadway series mm -hmm. we generally um, put musicals it's it's what our market has has voted for with their mm -hmm. ticket buying dollars um, so I do try to see everything that opens um, so when I see a play, I'm not necessarily seeing it to see if I want to book it. Mm -hmm. I'm seeing it so that I can vote you can with vote. full knowledge. Um, but absolutely, when I see a musical, I am absolutely looking, is this something that's going to resonate with South mm -hmm. Florida audiences? Is mm -hmm. this something that we're going to want to put at the top of our list when we start shaping up the following season? Now, I want to go back to um, some of the educational programs that you offer, because sure. I know you did something this year, and it might have started beforehand, but I just became aware of it and thought it was so exciting, your sensory productions. Oh, our sensory mm -hmm. friendly. Yeah, tell our audience yes. a little bit about that. Um, so I am so thrilled that we yeah. started to do this. And this is one of the things that we have been able to dive into because of our partnership with the Slowburn Theater Company. Mm -hmm because we had talked about doing this. Um, and Explain what they are. So what they are the is um, the entire house is open for people of all abilities. So it's, it's people on the spectrum, but it might also be people with brain injuries or Down syndrome or any number of different varying abilities. And 
Production-wise, what we do is we keep the house lights at 30%. Mm -hmm. We tone down any loud um, sound cues. If there's a gunshot or a loud scream, we lower the sound on that. We uh, eliminate any very startling light cues. So if there's um, a mirror ball, we won't use the mirror ball effect. If there's a strobe light, we'll take the strobe light effect out. And the other thing we do is we set it up for the families in advance. So for example, our very first one that we did was Tarzan. Mm -hmm. So we had the actor playing you know, the large daddy gorilla. Mm -hmm. He went out and he said, hi kids, uh, my name is Dante and I want you to know mm -hmm. that in just a minute, you're gonna see me come out and I'm gonna be loud and I'm gonna be mean but it's me. I'm an actor in a costume. <laughs> oh, that's wonderful. So these are people that might stay away from the theater for whatever yes. different reasons, and now they get to sit and experience they it. They get to experience it. But the, wonderful. the most important thing is setting it up that everyone sitting in that audience knows that no matter what happens, mm. we're fine. Mm -hmm. right. If somebody mm. screams, if somebody gets up, we just continue on mm -hmm. with the performance. And the actors went through training and the Theater Development Fund out of New York um, helps theaters get set up for doing this right. And they came down and they did training with our ushers and training mm -hmm. with our actors wow. and really made sure that we knew what we needed to do to make it an amazing experience. You also do closed captioning for a different audience. Yes, we do. Uh, we do open captioning. I'm they, sorry. They yeah. call it with the, um, you know, the small screen. Uh, we do audio description and we do sign language interpreted performances for our Broadway. I remember uh, interviewing somebody in the in the lobby once who could not speak more highly about the audio description because their sight had yes. deteriorated. And she had been going to theater for 25, 30 years, but had only recently lost her sight. And she thought, I'm never going to be able to go to theater again. And she was very grateful to you guys for providing that service. It's, it's a really fantastic thing. And the, the people that do the audio description, they work very hard. They see the show multiple times. Mm -hmm. They read the script. And they're, you know, as it's unfolding on the stage, they're describing what is happening so that uh, wow. they make it come to life visually inside people's minds. So where do you see for the future? Do you, more programs like that that you'd like to incorporate? Absolutely. Um, the Broward Center is very, very invested in accessibility. Mm -hmm. um, we want all of our performances to be accessible to as many people mm -hmm. as possible. Right. So I think that as our audiences age, we'll probably be doing more open captioning Mm -hmm. um, open mm -hmm. caption performances to make that accessible. Mm -hmm. And um, I recently saw a new technology where the open captioning actually happens on your phone. It's mm -hmm. called Gallopro. Oh, They're doing it on right. Broadway. And a lot of the Broadway houses have installed this so technology. in your phone? Yep. And I tried it during uh, My Fair Lady to see if it would be oh. distracting. Mm -hmm. And it's, you have a black screen and the letters are in pink and I can see mm -hmm. that becoming uh, more accessible to mm -hmm. regional theaters, but I think there are so many ways to make theater more accessible, and I'm thrilled that the Broward Center has made it a priority. Mm -hmm. Has other small companies approached you about um, possibly putting on their plays in your in your home? All the time. Oh. Yes, <laughs> yes, <laughs> and imagine. we have so many user groups that do use our various um, four theaters, six theaters. Wow. So yes, we very much we're, we're very very invested in being accessible. I've always been curious, are there types of shows that you put on that you think people in general would be surprised do really, really well, and <laughs> people go, really? Yeah. And also, are there f things that you don't schedule anymore because you went, wow, that there isn't an interest in that? What? Well, I think um, around the country, you know, you're seeing some trends where uh, live classical music is, is struggling in a lot of markets, mm -hmm. um, including our market. So we're doing, we're, we are still doing some and we're committed to always having some live classical music, but we also have a number of user groups that are presenting that. So we don't necessarily book it because it's being done by other people mm. uh, in our mm -hmm. theaters. Um, I think the biggest surprises for people are the YouTube artists uh -huh. um, mm -hmm. because there are so many of them that people are like, who is that? 
and they sell 2,000 tickets. <laughs> so it's constantly astounding mm -hmm. how many artists are out there that you just don't know about <laughs> until you know about them, but they have a fan base. So you need to be alert across the board from the youngest to as the population ages on what is pertinent and not only what sells, I'm, I'm so happy to hear that, that you just doesn't, it, I mean, I'm sure you want to do well, you know, financially. Well, you, you want to have an audience. Yes, <laughs> you do, but you're, but you're also giving a lot of people something uh, that is very needed. And I, uh, I applaud you. And Thank what is you. the Commend website you. for yeah. Broward Center? Uh, BrowardCenter.org. And that's where people can find all the listings. Absolutely. Wonderful. This has been absolutely amazing. Yes. And, and uh, I, I've learned a lot. I mean, I, I just <laughs> did, you know, I didn't know. And I, and I think that um, if there's a, um, a, a, a small company that's interested in, in working um, at, at the center, would you um, consider working with them or? Sure, and there are a lot of different ways to come into the center. So it's all on the website. We rent all of our venues also. Um, oh, you rent it also, absolutely. which is great. So they should which absolutely go to the website and see all the different ways they can get involved. Well, That's to learn on that site. You have been absolutely, absolutely. marvelous. Yeah. And I think we all learned a lot mm -hmm. uh, today. And this has certainly been a great conversation. Well, unfortunately, we have to bring it to a close. <laughs> and I want to thank our panelists for being here today and our guest, Jill Craddish. So great meeting you. Thank, thank you, you, Jill. Thank you so much. And I especially want to thank you for joining us here on Spotlight on the Arts. This show actually belongs to you, the community. So keep watching and keep going out to the theater. Go to the Broward <laughs> Center. See a show, a concert. They have so much to choose from. And find out what's happening in all the theaters in South Florida. You can go to floridatheateronstage.com and join us here next week for Spotlight on the Arts. Mm -hmm.